the good life full of fun. Hey guys, welcome to my kitchen. Another big exciting day today in Joe's Kitchen. What are we gonna make today? I'm glad you asked that question. We're gonna make roasted garlic, mashed potatoes, cooking Italian with Joe. Mm, forget about it, Italian style. Now what the heck does that mean? What that means is we're gonna make mashed potatoes like you've never had them before. They're gonna be absolutely delicious. So I'm gonna show you some great little secrets and tips to make them awesome and I'm gonna explain a little bit while we're going through it. Now I wanna also explain something to you as well. You can make instant mashed potatoes. Great, no problem, rock and roll, right? Number two, you can make simple mashed potatoes. You can take some potatoes, peel them, throw them in some hot water, boil them. You can do that, right? Throw a little bit of flavoring in there, whip them up. I'm not saying not to do that. I'm not saying that doesn't work. What I'm saying, what we're showing you today is gonna take a little bit longer. It's a little bit more complicated, but in the end it's worth it because it's gonna be roasted garlic, mashed potatoes, cooking Italian with style. <laughs> Joe, I'm so excited, I can't even say it. Mm, forget about it, Italian style, okay? This is gonna be awesome. All right, so what are we gonna start with? Well, number one, you need potatoes. So we're gonna start with eight good size russet potatoes. Now, why do people talk about russet potatoes? If you guys ever watched our videos on um, risotto, what you'll notice is there's a, there's a rice, it's called arborio rice, and the reason you wanna use that is it's higher in starch. So russet potatoes are really high in starch, so that means they come out nice and flaky and creamy and uh, really light. So that's why russet potatoes typically, traditionally give you the best uh, flavored and the best uh, texture in, in mashed potatoes. So you wanna start with eight russet potatoes. Now we already went ahead and baked them. So what I did is 350 degrees and I put them equally distributed in the, in the oven. I moved them once to rearrange it. So cause, cause some ovens will have a hot spot or not. Okay, so after about 20, 30 minutes, I just flipped them and rearranged them, okay? And they went for a little bit over an hour. So they'll go at 350, they'll go anywhere from about 50 minutes, depending on the size in your oven, to a little over an hour, and you should be good, okay? So we went ahead and did those. They're gonna come out of their hot. I'm gonna show you that, okay? Number two, to make the actual potatoes, we're gonna start with a half of a cup of Parmesan cheese and a half of a cup of Romano cheese. I know what you're saying. Stop now, you had me at hello. I hear what you're saying, okay? So that's what we're starting with right here, okay? Number two, we're gonna put some secret ingredient. Oh, nutmeg, I love it. So listen, I always tell you guys, you know, if you're gonna add nutmeg, anytime you're adding cream or butter, you know, in Italian heritage, that, that old Italy style, a little bit of nutmeg isn't gonna take over the flavor, it's gonna enhance it, it's something that's gonna bring out the flavor. You won't even really taste it. I've had some people uh, you know, message me on, uh, on Facebook or on uh, social media and they'll ask, you know, you put nutmeg in a lot of your stuff, you know, it's not gonna taste like pumpkin pie or anything like that, so don't get nervous. You just want what I call a breath. So we're gonna use a quarter of a teaspoon of freshly ground nutmeg, okay? Now, what else are we gonna use to send it right through the roof, right? Mascarpone cheese, all right? Oh, I mean, you wanna smell Italy nutmeg, mascarpone cheese, Parmesan Romano cheese. So we're using four tablespoons, four tablespoons of mascarpone cheese, okay? And then we're gonna use four tablespoons of butter. Okay, now you can use, a lot of people ask me about salted, unsalted. No, it's not a big deal, guys. If you use salted butter, just before you add salt, just taste it. If it's unsalted, know that you're gonna be able to control the salt content a little bit, right? Ooh, love butter, love butter. Half a cup of heavy cream. Did you guys ask for a locale uh, mashed potatoes? Not this video, okay? Mm, cream, love it. I love the smell. Remember, you taste so much with your, with your smell. And we're gonna use about four cloves, and we just did a video, we just shot a video on roasted garlic. Does that look absolutely awesome, delicious, or what? We're gonna use salt, pepper, a splash of Vito and Joe's, extra virgin, absolutely fantastic from the hills of Puglia. Olive oil, if you guys haven't seen it, it comes in liter and half liter. It's 20 to $30 a bottle, it's absolutely delicious. This comes right from our farm or from farms right near our farm in Puglia region. And we've been selling so much, we're actually uh, working with some other farms. And it's Vito and Joe's Extra Virgin Olive Oil. We just came up with a beautiful new label. Isn't that gorgeous? Isn't that absolutely beautiful? That is good tasting real stuff. Green gold as they call it, all right? Now, to take it over the top, I know what you're thinking, how can you make it even better? I'm glad you asked that question. I'm gonna share it with you right now. We want to add a topping to it. So I'm gonna add about a half a cup to three quarters of a cup of unflavored breadcrumbs, 
okay? Then I'm gonna add four tablespoons of butter, half a cup of Parmesan, half a cup of Romano, salt, pepper, a little olive oil. I'm gonna mix that up. When I'm done with the mashed potatoes, I'm gonna put it on the top. I'm gonna roast it. Now, I'm not gonna bake it. I'm gonna roast it. And I'm just gonna put the roaster on just for a few minutes. Just get the top nice and brown and crunchy and crispy. Oh, it's gonna be absolutely delicious. You guys ready to get going? All right, so what I wanna do is share a couple of tips with you. Number one, you gotta use a ricer. Why? Because when you pump it through a ricer, it allows that flakiness of the starch to stay light and fluffy. If you don't use a ricer, it's still gonna come out okay, but you'll notice it gets a little bit more pasty or a lot more pasty, especially when you're dealing with a high starch russet potato. Number two, some people ask me, hey, why are you baking the potatoes? Remember, anytime you add water to anything, you're gonna dilute the flavor, number one. Number two, what'll happen is the potato will pick up some of the flavors that the water has. So if you have fluorinated water, or high mineral water, whatever, you can get a little bit of a metallic or metal flavor feel in the potato. So you always wanna bake it. It's gonna give you a drier, lighter, flakier potato. Same thing with your gnocchis, right? You're gonna always wanna bake the potato, all right? So let me grab those potatoes right out of the oven. I'm gonna pop them right up here. I'll show you. I know you're thinking I'm a brave guy. Woo, that is seriously a hot potato. Let me pull these out. We'll get right back to you guys. All right, guys, there you go. Those are rustic potatoes. I just pulled them out of the oven, okay? They've been in over a little bit over an hour, all right? And I wanna peel them. So I'm gonna peel them when they're still hot. And it's easier to peel them when they're still hot. So you're just gonna grab a knife, and once you get that skin, and I'll show you how to do one of these quick. Once you do that skin, because you gotta peel them regardless, right? See how they just, it just pulls off beautiful. Look how nice and light they are. Nice and dry on the outside. Look at that, you see the steam coming off? Woo! Okay, so it only takes a minute, and you wouldn't use a peeler. In this case, you're just gonna use a knife. You gotta peel it anyways, one way or the other, right? And what's nice about the knife, like I said, is you're gonna get moments where a little bit more of the potato's gonna come off, and you can, you can stop that with a knife, all right? So I'm gonna go ahead and peel these up, get them ready to rice. I'm gonna show you rice in them. We're gonna put them in a bowl. This moves along pretty quickly. It's gonna be a lot of fun. We're gonna broil it. I said roast. I meant broil the top of this puppy. It's gonna be absolutely delicious and it is Cooking Italian with Sto Joe. I can't even talk sometimes, I get so excited. Cooking Italian with Joe, forget about it. Garlic roasted mashed potatoes. Talk to you guys in the comments. Hey guys, all right, so it's been about four and a half hours. No, I'm just kidding. But see how I've got all, oh, got a little piece of skin right there. But I've got all these peeled and they're still nice and hot, okay? Which makes life a lot easier. So now what I'm gonna do is, it's not always the easiest thing, but it's a great workout because you got a lot of carbs in here and you're gonna use pecs and delts and lats and you're gonna squeeze that baby up, all right? So I'm gonna take my ricer and then I'm gonna take a knife and I'm just, you know, you wouldn't wanna try to do the whole thing, okay? But I'm gonna show you this, this is great, okay? So you're gonna pop a couple of pieces of potato in there, okay? And then what you're gonna do is when you squeeze this, if you guys can see it, see that, look at that, look how nice that is. See how nice and light that is? Oh my God, it's like Play-Doh. Remember when you were a kid, you were playing with Play-Doh? It's essentially adult Play-Doh is what we're doing right now. So you're gonna pop those through, and if they're cooked really well, this is really easy. See, I'm not straining myself. These come, most of your ricers come with a lever, so you can put them up against the pot. Just hold the pot, because if not, it's gonna, you know, she's gonna flip on you, okay? And then once in a while, you just gotta go in there and clean the, the starch out, um, just to open it up. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna rice these. It's only gonna take me about five, six minutes. And then when I'm done with that, I want to show you what the finished product looks like. And then we're going to add some beautiful things. Now, before I do that, because I almost forgot, I'm going to show you one little trick. And that is with our garlic. We want to add a little garlic to it. So there's my roasted garlic. So I've got some really small ones in there. So I'm probably going to do, you know, four to five big ones, if you will. Um, as far as clothes goes, roasted. All right. And then I'm just going to push it look at that see that let's see how it rice right through there and that beautiful and that just gives you an absolutely beautiful mix you don't need to use your blender on this because it's all going to be perfect it's going to be perfect consistency all right so i'm going to throw another little piece of garlic in there oh, 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 oh. let me tell you count dracula is not coming to my house tonight i could i can assure you of that all right guys so i'll see you in a couple minutes i'm having some fun working on some great carbs it's been four and a half hours I'm gonna tell you, man, have you guys noticed the pipes and the delts right there? I can eat this whole bowl and I still wouldn't recapture all the carbohydrates that I've burned. I'm only kidding. You. 
But that took about uh, three and a half hours. No, I'm just kidding. It took about, uh, say, almost 10 minutes, eight minutes, right? So what I want to show you here, if you can see, you see how nice and light and fluffy that is, okay? Look at that, it's perfect. Now this is just starting to cool down, but not nothing horrible, okay? And if you remember, I riced the garlic so I can smell that garlic in there, right? And I'm just gonna take a little taste of it now, just for salt. Yeah, it's beautiful, okay? So essentially, we're gonna do everything. The one thing I like to do now is I'm gonna add my cream first. And sometimes if it comes out a little dry, you know, you just add a little bit more cream, so don't, you know, there's a little bit of a feel to it, all right? And then I want to add my butter while this thing's still warm, because we're going to heat it up again in the oven when we boil it, right? I'm going to add my nutmeg, okay, and sprinkle that all the way across. Beautiful, all right? And I'm adding everything now because I want it to fully incorporate when I when I mix it, okay? I'm going to add my mascarpone cheese, and then I got a half a cup of Romano and half a cup of Parmesan, okay? So I'm going to pop that in there. Can you smell goodness right now or what? I'm telling you. If you could just be in here, oh, there's my butter. So I'm gonna mix my butter up. And then essentially, you're gonna mix it. Now I've got a nice wooden olive wooden spoon. And, and I haven't put salt and pepper yet, so I wanna just give it a good, kind of a rough mix first. The cheese has salt in it, so just give you a heads up, okay? Oh, that's good. So what I'm gonna do, coming together really nice right now. So I'm gonna let the butter melt and get that mix in. It's a little bit dry, so I'm probably gonna put a quarter cup more of heavy cream in there. It's just a little dry, not horrible. But again, those russets are beautiful. They came out, oh my God, the consistency of this is perfect. So this is what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna add some more pepper, okay? Or some pepper, I didn't add pepper yet. All right. And then I'm gonna add some salt. Probably about a half of a teaspoon to a teaspoon of salt. Okay? So let me grab that. And I'm gonna add some olive oil. Okay, now if you guys remember, we're gonna add about a splash of olive oil. Okay? So probably about a tablespoon to a two tablespoon Vito and Joe's extra virgin. That's beautiful. And I'm gonna add just a little bit more of that heavy cream. Okay, hold on one second. So again, I just wanna add a little bit more cream because that rust is just a little bit dry. And that will always happen, guys. Don't get nervous with that because sometimes when you're cooking, you know, you might get eight russets and three or four of them are, you know, a lot bigger. So you always try to get them consistent size. Oh yeah, that's a lot better. Yeah, it's beautiful, perfect. I mean, can you guys smell that? Oh my God, that is just fantastic. So you're gonna mix this really well. The smell in this kitchen, oh my God. You can smell the garlic, the cream, the butter, the potato. And again, you're almost folding it. You know, you what I do is I take the knife. You're not gonna be able to, or the, the knife, the spoon, and I kind of push it across off to the side. See what I mean? So I just keep mixing it like that. It's tough to use a whisk. You know, some people ask me, hey, could you use a whisk? Because it's so thick at this point. So I'm gonna have to do a taste tester in a minute. I see just a little bit more butter. So I'm gonna keep mixing it. Yep, there it is right there. Oh, 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 that is good. So I'm gonna keep mixing. Then I'm gonna taste it. Give it about two more minutes of mixing again. Right? Forget about it. I'm ready for the mob movie, you know what I'm saying? Wouldn't that be a great character in a mob movie, something like that? The cook, hey, how you doing? You guys want some roasted garlic cooking Italian with Joe? <laughs> Mashed potatoes, Italian stuff, forget about it. <laughs> All right, so I'll tune right back with you guys. My acting debut's over. Let me just try a little bit of this. I literally have not tasted them yet. I'm not kidding you. Off camera, when we do those little things, I've just been mixing. I'm almost out of breath. <laughs> I think the word fantastic, delicious, and molto delecio come into mind. I'm going to add a, just a tinge more salt. And I think we're ready to go. So now what I want to do, I'm going to add a little bit more salt, probably a half a teaspoon here. And there you go. And then what I'm going to do is I want to mix them just lightly. And then I got to put it in our serving dish. And then we're going to mix the top. So hold on, Magic TV. All right, so now I'm going to put it in a serving dish, right? Look at that. Oh, whoa. 
Holy man, this stuff's so fresh, it's like trying to fight itself out of my hands here. All right, so let's do this, that. You know what's nice about making your own food, which I always tell people is, you know what's in it. You know, a lot of times you're buying stuff, and boy, unless it's certified organic or whatever, you know, you don't know what artificial this or artificial that's in there. So, so now what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna evenly disperse it in this beautiful Italian-made bacon dish, okay? And just give it a nice little cover, right? Now this is done. Too fat. Mmm. Oh! Okay, now I'm gonna make that topping, right? So I'm gonna pop that over there, match TV. Okay, breadcrumbs. Pop that in there. Whoop! Some salt, because these are unflavored, okay? So I want pepper. And I'm gonna put some salt in there. I gotta melt the butter, so let me go melt that butter to mix in there, okay? So give me one second. I'm gonna put about a half of a teaspoon or a little bit more salt. Just to bring those breadcrumbs up to some good flavor, okay? While I'm mixing the rest, I'm gonna melt that butter, so give me one second. All right, guys, so I've got my melted butter, okay? Four tablespoons, all right? And remember, when you serve this, you can always throw a little more butter on it or whatever if you wanna, you mix it, okay? We're gonna throw our half a cup of Parmesan shredded, which I just did a little while ago. We've got Romano, okay? I'm gonna mix that, I'm gonna throw a little bit of parsley in there just to give it a little color and a teeny bit of peppery citrus flavor. Okay, so I'm just mixing that up, right? And you can always throw a little rosemary in there if you want, or thyme, or you know, even basil. Depending on what you're serving it with, you know, you could always offset it if you want. I'm not doing that with this case because we're gonna make something real special tomorrow. We're gonna make pota potato patties, fried potato patties. I'll show you what the Italians do with that leftover mashed potato which is absolutely delicious. And there's another dish my dad used to make a lot of times, which is fried spaghetti. So basically what you do is you take that leftover spaghetti, get a pan really hot with some olive oil and butter, and you essentially fry it. Oh, it's so delicious. So I'll show you one of those videos here pretty quick in the next couple weeks. So I'm all set to go, right? So now what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna spread that over the top. All right, whoop, I'm blocking you, sorry. I'm known to do that, I don't mean to, here. There you go, look at that. And I'll tell you, the smell of that alone is just great. You just wanna evenly spread it. You don't wanna like a big, thick, you know, hunk of it anywhere, right? You want a nice, thin little crust over the top. And what that's gonna do is that when you serve it, it just gives you that extra, you know, texture is so much a part of a food, isn't it? So you bite into something and it's got that beautiful, nice texture. Now I got the oven going and we've got it on broil. So I'm gonna broil that. And I just wanna make sure it's nice and even. Look at that, isn't that beautiful, right? All right? Perfect, all right? So I'm gonna throw that in the oven. I'm gonna say no more than 10 minutes, so it's gonna be anywhere from five to 10 minutes. It's gonna be nice and hot when we pull that out. We're gonna plate it, and my favorite part, we're gonna taste it. I'll talk to you guys in a couple minutes. All right, guys, you ready? Boy, I gotta tell you, the smell in here is unbelievable. So I'm gonna pull that out without burning myself. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, oh my God, are you serious? Does that look unbelievable or does that look unbelievable? That is the smell of Italy in my parents' kitchen right there, guys. I gotta tell you, that's absolutely delicious. All right, so we're gonna take a couple of picks. We'll be right back, favorite part, taste it. Talk to you guys in a minute. All right, guys, here we go. So I like that side with that nice crawl. Oh, look at that, is that awesome or what? Can you guys see the steam? The steam and the smell of absolute deliciousness coming off of that. I'll tell you, the smell in here is unbelievable. It just smells, it smells just like my parents' kitchen. Oh, you know, you can smell, immediately you can grab the garlic and now you got the butter and the breadcrumbs. Mmm, and the cream. Oh my God, it's absolutely delicious. Favorite part, here we go. So I like that little crunchy on top. Mm. Mm. You know what's, what just sends that right through the roof is the that cheese broiled up on the top. Oh my God. I mean, it's, it's so delicious to begin with and creamy, but it gives you that little texture, that little crunch. Mm. I'm gonna tell you what, when that camera goes off, this guy right here is totally in my tummy. 
What a great recipe, huh? So if you guys are looking to step up your mashed potatoes a bit, certainly you can share some of the ideas or all of it or follow the recipe right to the T. Absolutely delicious. Until next week, guys, spend some time with your family in the kitchen, share your heritage, set some traditions, have some fun, make some absolutely delicious mashed potatoes, cook it at 10 with Joe, forget about it Italian style. Have a great week. Until we celebrate next week's recipe, mwah, buon appetito. It's the good life.